and Jonathan. from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. The show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. Tim, the December 2017 episode of the show. We're very excited to be here. And you probably noticed I've got a little bit of a cold going on, unfortunately. Uh, so. Yeah, but you're all celebrating, <laughs> already celebrating for Christmas and Trying the holiday to. spirit. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a nice December. And Tim, this show's a little bit later. Usually we would do it the uh, first, first, right, the first Thursday of the month. But because of uh, some things we'll talk about maybe later in the show, couldn't do it on the first Thursday of the month, so it's the second Thursday. And Tim, I wasn't going to gonna miss this even if i do have a little bit of a cold hopefully we can work through it and it won't be a real big deal but we'll see right well you know the weather's 90 one day in texas and 30 the next so i know I, that's why everybody's getting sick exactly it's hard to uh, it's hard to continue to uh, keep your health when like you said it's hot it's cold it's hot it's cold all the time so but we want to thank you guys for joining us tonight and uh, of course tim it's the december episode so i think we've got some gifts to exchange a little bit later too as well right oh, yeah so we'll be exchanging some gifts. We'll be talking about your questions. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the live chat. We'll be happy to answer those as the show goes on. So that'll be good. Also, we will be giving away, Tim, on this episode, we'll be giving away a Retron 1 HD console with a 501 game cartridge. Right. So uh, you guys stay tuned for the details on that. You will need an email address in order to enter that contest. But Tim, before we get into the rest of the show, how are you doing? How is everything going? It's good. Just you know how it is this time of year. Everything gets a little speeds up a notch, gets a little busier, traffic gets a little heavier, but everything's good. That's good. And as you can see, I mean, y'all can't see, but the game room is an absolute wreck. <laughs> it's basically like a warehouse right now because I have boxes of stuff that has come in from gifts and things that we're going to be giving out here, you know, like I said, to family members. So hopefully I can get all this stuff uh, wrapped and under a tree pretty soon here, Tim. So, but yes, all that stuff's going on. And since the last live show, I actually had a little bit of a flood in the game room, like right behind us here. Oh, uh, yeah. My air conditioning line got clogged and kind of leaked down the floor. So we've been dealing with that, been dealing with, of course, uh, December stuff, Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was great. We went to West Texas and drove about seven hours out to see some family and stuff. We were out, uh, Pretty close to Lubbock. That's a big town that you could save. So we are uh, we had a good time, though. It was great. Well, that's good. Well, guys, we want to thank you again for joining us. And remember that you guys can send us your questions or anything that you, any comments you may have as well in the live chat for this episode. So we want to thank you guys again for joining us. Now, Tim, we want to remind everybody that we've had our DVD sets on sale, our right. volumes one, two, and three. And that sale is going on through the end of the year. Okay, so starting in January, the sale's going to go off. But just to remind you guys, and we'll show it here on the outline so you can see it, is that we have our Volumes 1, 2, and 3 DVD set for only $38. Tim, that's $7 off of our regular price. And of course, this includes three discs, and it has 60 minutes between all three discs, 60 minutes of never-before-seen bonus material you won't find on our YouTube page. And to get that special pricing, you have to go to our website at arcaderepairtips.com slash store slash sale. If you guys don't already have our volumes one two and three dvd this is a great way to get it right tim yeah i think the uh the bloopers reel alone is worth it <laughs> yeah there's if some really good bloopers, bloopers on there for sure uh lots of great uh information on there of course all the videos from our youtube page are on there along with some bonus videos tim that are very helpful such as you know uh, chicken and replacing a hot replacing a flyback all of those all right. great videos that are only found on our dvd sets and so if you don't have our volumes one two and three we highly recommend that you guys check them out volumes one two and three again $38 and Tim I'll throw the slide back up here so people can see uh, that's at arcaderepairchips.com slash store slash sale so you guys go ahead go there pick up our volumes one two and three DVD set for a special price <clears throat> Okay, Tim. Now, uh, we have uh, YouTube Punk is in the chat room. It looks like he may be the only one. If somebody else is in there, please let us know. But he asked one question. Okay. He says, um, "Do you guys, are you guys ever going to sh sell show t-shirts? So oh. I guess we could. We've thought about it before, and that may be something that we do in the future. But right now, no plans, I guess, to do a show t-shirt. But we do have a t-shirt that we wear when we go places. I think you wore it on a couple of the live shows. Yeah, the staff it, member yeah, one. Yeah, we have a staff one. But we, you know, we what we do basically is we... Uh, 
we take off the staff part and it just says arcade repair chips, which is a pretty cool looking shirt. So we may at some point sell those, Tim, but we don't currently. Right. So, uh, but if you guys are, are looking for that, uh, hopefully at some point we'll definitely get some t-shirts out to you and you guys can represent arcade repair tips out there oh, in sure. the world. So, uh, but we'll, we'll think about those. You know, the hard thing about t-shirts, Tim, is having to carry multiple sizes and all that kind of stuff. So if we do it, we'll have to do it through like Teespring or one of these, uh, one of these other websites that does that kind of stuff. Yes. So, but, uh, you guys look for that. Uh, we'll definitely consider it and, and hopefully we can get a t-shirt to you guys very soon. Now, Tim, should we go ahead and tell them how they can enter the contest, or should we move on? Well, sure. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll go ahead and tell you guys. So, we're going to be mentioning this throughout the show, but through this show, we will be giving away a Retron 1 HD console with a Super Game 501 game cartridge. So, it's the same every time. Okay, the contest does not change, but the contest only goes to the end of the show. So, if you're watching this right now and you want to enter, go ahead and enter, and here's how you do it, guys. Okay, what we want you to do is we want you to send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. We, we need your name, we need your address, and we need the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? Okay, if you don't know, it's on the website on arcaderepairtips.com. You can right. find it if you search around. You'll find the year. Tim knows the year, but he's not going to tell you, right? No. So, it wasn't uh, last year. Yeah, that's right. it wasn't last year. It that's right. Hit. But if you guys want to win one, we need an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com with your name, a shipping address where we can send you the console if you win it, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? Now, we will be repeating this throughout the show, so if you're if you're not watching now, you may catch it later, all that kind of stuff, but um, as long as the show's going on, we are going to have the contest running, and Tim, at the end of the show, we will announce the winner. All right. Okay, so already, guys, if you're right in the now, chat room... chances are pretty good. That's right. If you're in the chat room, go ahead and send an email, contest at arcaderepairtips.com, name, shipping address... And the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? There so send go. those over to us, and that will enter you in the contest. Well, Tim, we'll give that information out a little bit later again, so if people tune in late or something, they can still enter. But let's go ahead and work into our questions for this month, Tim. Okay. And the first one we have is from Michael. And so let's go ahead and look at Michael's question here. Oh. And he says, hi, I own a Final Fight arcade machine that is having a monitor issue. The monitor is a Wells Garner 25K7193. It was working fine, then all of a sudden I turn around and see this problem. Can you help point me in the right direction? I am novice repair person, so I hope this is an easy fix. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Kind regards, Michael. So Tim, he sent us two pictures here, and the first picture we have here is the before, and the second one is the after, okay? Yeah, a lot harder to play in that after picture. You absolutely. you got to be really good. Right, absolutely. So that's a that's a big deal. And so basically what we have here, Tim, is a little bit of collapse, right? Yeah, it looks like a vertical uh, collapse so is what, going on. So now this is a K7000 type monitor, Tim. So, I mean, are there certain areas or parts that he really needs to focus on in order to get the collapse under yes, control? Yes, there's a kind of a vertical section, you would call it. And um, you're looking for some IC chips in that area. Also, uh, there's a couple capacitors, but we got to do a little bit of work all in that one particular area. Right. And so let's go ahead and show that here, Tim. We actually have some specific parts for you guys so you can check it out. So from the picture, it looks like your K7193 monitor is experiencing a vertical collapse slash deflection issue, okay? So what you want to do is you want to touch up any cold or cracked solder joints. Because, Tim, he said it was good one minute, and then it went to the collapse right. after that. And so any time that it was good one minute and the collapse happens, a lot of times it's just because there's maybe a cold or cracked solder joint that is not making a good connection. So let's go through the entire chassis and let's touch up any cold or cracked solder joints that you find. And Tim, you mentioned the IC chip. So IC3 and IC2 are very synonymous with this kind of issue. I believe IC3 is what we, you know, is what we think of as a vertical IC chip. Uh -huh. uh, IC2 is also related to that. Capacitor C50 is also another one you want to check. Resistors uh, R80, R91, R98, and Diode D13. Between all of those parts, Tim, that should get his monitor back up and running. And of course, Tim, we have an entire post on this that you can check out on repairing monitor collapse issues with Michael that is very good at telling you exactly how to solve this problem, right? Yes, and uh, if you watch that video, Michael talks about the yoke wires and how that uh, the yellow yoke wire, I believe, is the one that's close. These are all in that area right where the yoke wires usually Where come the vertical in. section is, right? Yeah. All of these parts that's are located how, in the vertical section of the That's monitor. how you can tell where the vertical section is. A lot of times, follow your yoke wires where they come into your chassis. 
Absolutely. And so I'll put this back up for Michael here. But what you want to do is you want to replace those parts on that vertical section. Like we said, IC3 is going to be the big one here. But some of the capacitors and resistors and even one diode, Tim, can also play into that as well. And so uh, those are just some of the common parts that we found from our repairs that we've seen. So, yes. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So, Michael, hopefully that answers your question. Good luck getting that final fight. Wells Garner K7193 monitor back up and running. Now, Tim, I forgot to mention that we have a live studio audience tonight. Yes. So, um, check it out over here. It's we have of... somebody with us. So, introduce yourself over there. You might have to yell for the, for the mic here. Matt Carter. So, Matt Hi. Carter is here. Okay. And yeah. he is the only person in our live studio audience tonight that's uh, going to be watching here uh -huh. so um you can clap anytime if it's appropriate or whatever you I want to have do. the applause oh yeah we need, we need an applause sign for you i'm we'll sorry Matt. i'm holding up the sign there's no audience to clap yet there you okay. go now now matt has a very interesting story about an injury that recently happened that we might talk about it on the uh, after show here in a little bit um but needless to say we're glad you're out of the hospital is that a good yes. way to say it? So there you go. So um, we're glad to have our friend Matt here out of the hospital uh, being a part of our live show tonight. Matt, thank you for joining us tonight. It's exciting to have an actual live studio audience of sorts You're here. So. <laughs> so there we go. So guys, remember, you can ask us questions in the, live, in the live chat as well. Or if you have comments about any of the things that we cover on the live show, you can leave us there as well. If you missed the entry for the contest, which we put up earlier, we will be mentioning that again. So if you guys are here for the contest, we will be mentioning that again here in just a bit. But Tim, let's continue on with our questions. And the next one we have is from Jeff. And Jeff says, I enjoy your post on the toolbox kit info. I have a couple of questions for additional items when working on black and white slash vector monitors. Do I need a special HV or high voltage discharging tool instead of the homemade version? Where's the best place to buy one if needed? I have also seen on another site using a non or using non-conductive tools to adjust pots and other adjustments on the monitor. Are these necessary? If so, what to buy and where? Thanks for sharing your experience with us amateurs. Okay here, Tim. So Jeff has watched our video on your first arcade toolbox, okay, uh -huh. which is a very popular video we've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys on. But he's asking, does he, does he need a special high voltage discharging tool when he's working with the black and white and the vector monitors? And what is the best place to get the non-conductive tools that he may need to adjust his monitor? Yeah, well, you can... Um you definitely need the high voltage probe. In fact, it's really a good way to discharge any monitor. Right, and the only reason we don't recommend it overall is because it's kind of pricey, right? Right, you're looking at about $80, $75, something like that. Uh, B&K Precision makes one that's a really good, they, uh, tube rejuvenator our, that we use is made by them. Uh, easy to find on eBay and stuff like that. Um, the, the second part he asked about the monitor adjustment tools, you don't really have to have them on most monitors just to turn the pots. Right. Like the white plastic pots you can turn by hand or we stick a hap screwdriver or something up in there or a regular screwdriver. But if you're going to adjust a width coil and other stuff which we talk about, you really need those. Don't use an Allen wrench. You use the correct tool. So they're kind of two good things to have in that toolbox. Although for most monitor adjustments, you really wouldn't need that. Exactly. Need and so let's go ahead and put up the slide here, Tim, because it's got some additional information. Yes, we highly recommend getting a high voltage probe if you're going to be discharging black and white or vector monitors. Like you mentioned, Tim, B&K Precision makes a couple of different models. Um, the PR28A is kind of their low end model and it's $75, okay. just to give yeah. you an idea. And we put a link there to Amazon if you guys want to buy that. Um, but Here's the deal, Tim. If you're just doing like color roster monitors, the screwdriver works pretty well. Yeah. Okay, the screwdriver and alligator clip technique works pretty well. But if you're going to be doing black and white or vector monitors, you really want to have a high voltage probe. I mm -hmm. mean, it really does make a big difference. And then on the monitor adjustment tools, like Tim mentioned, not really necessary for most adjustments, but... If you want to adjust the horizontal width coil or if your monitor has adjustments that don't have a knob installed, you may want them. And Tim, we recommend the, the Jonard five-piece toolkit, which we also put the Amazon link to. And Tim, we have sold a lot of these different kits on Amazon. Uh, uh -huh. It's one of our biggest sellers from our website. We have a link on our website to it. And uh, it, it really is a handy thing to have because being non-conductive means that if you accidentally touch a part of the monitor that's hot, you don't have to worry about getting shot. And that's the good, the good part about it. Even working with just the the normal raster monitors like we do i have slipped or you know hit or you somebody calls your name you look around or something you touch something 
So it is a good, it's a good thing to have that piece of plastic in your hand that won't shock you or, or send a spark your way. Sometimes I've never really been that hurt by one or, or more than likely it's, you can actually ground out something and do damage. A guy was emailing me the other day. Basically he had damaged uh, a monitor by trying that and it kind of arced across and hit something else and damaged his hot. Right, I which is why the non-conductive tools are so important. Yeah, it's not just for your safety, it's also for the repair and to not damage anything else while you're in there too. Absolutely. So Jeff, hopefully it answers your question. Yes, you do want to get a high voltage probe if you're going to be working with black and white or vector monitors. And you can get those for about $75, B&K Precision. And Tim, I'll actually throw up the links here. And these links we'll put in the uh, in the YouTube video show notes as well. So you guys can uh, click on them if you want them. And the monitor adjustment tool is not necessary for most monitors, but... If you are going to adjust that horizontal width coil, or if you're, you've got a monitor that does not have knobs installed, you'll definitely want to get the uh, Jonard 5-piece non-conductive toolkit that we recommend. So, Jeff, hopefully it answers your question, and good luck with your future repairs. And hopefully those tools, Tim, will help him out with whatever he's going to be tackling here in the future, right? It's great. Almost must have if you're going to do more, th more than one monitor repair. If you're going to do a lot of monitor repair, you need those tools. Absolutely. So, Jeff, hopefully it answers your question. Good luck with all your future repairs. Okay, Tim, let's move to John. And John says, if you were to replace the CRT in a game with a new flat screen, would the light gun still work? Now, Tim, we get this question a lot, and, mm -hmm. you know, it really comes down to what kind of light guns you have in your game, right? Right. If they're the lethal weapon... Uh, or lethal Area enforcers. I mean, yeah, lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. Lethal enforcers or Air 51, those type of HAP 45 caliber guns, the blue and the red ones, those those will not work you, I was about good. to say, we have a police trainer over to the side. Yeah. Uh, police trainer, you can pull over one of the guns, uh, but... A uh, police trainer uses optical guns like those games too. Yeah, there we go, guy. right there. If you've got one of these guys, right, then this is an optical gun, right? Yes. So uh, flat screens do not work with optical guns. No, right? you would need to uh, have a CRT in there for those to work. Uh, but if you got a game like um, that uses the pots, like Terminator 2 or Revolution X or Operation Wolf, those now you can put an LCD inside of those because they use... For direction, it uses a potentiometer to tell where it is on the screen. Right. And so, Tim, we basically sum that all up in this outline slide here. And like you said, it depends on the type of light guns that your arcade game currently uses. If your arcade game uses optical-based guns like Lethal Enforcers, Area 51, Police Trainer, etc., then they won't work with an LCD. And it really comes down to, Tim, the fact that optical guns use scan lines to track position. If there's no scan lines, you can't pick up the location. Right. And so, like newer models, there's like the one, the LCD on your laptop or LCD screens that you'd put in an arcade game. They don't use scan lines. And without those scan lines, it has no idea where you're shooting on the screen. That's why even on some monitors, just turning up the brightness will actually help it some because it's able to see those scan lines easier. Exactly. And find them. Now, if your game uses potentiometer-based guns, and like you mentioned, uh, we've got Terminator 2, Revolution X, Operation Wolf. There's a lot of different ones right. that use potentiometer potentiometer Jurassic based guns. Park. Jurassic Park would be another one. Then an LCD monitor works fine. Yes. Okay, but it just really depends on what kind of guns you have in your arcade game. Right. Now, there's a, a lot of guns. Um, now, this is talking mainly about older cabinets, but like a lot of the newer games use like optical sensors with LCDs, right? Yeah. Like, I know you guys have a Luigi's Mansion. You've got, um, oh, what's another one that may, may be something like that? Where Luigi's Mansion actually has like, there's, I guess there's infrared sensors around the screen and it has an optical sensor on the gun to work. Correct. And so, so sometimes you can, you can still use that technology, but that's more like what the Wii used, you know, mm -hmm. as far as its technology goes. It's less, it's less, it's not really the optical part of it that's the important part on that right so light guns that were right we're exactly when we're talking about light guns that's what we're and talking like about here. deer hunting usa right, some exactly. of those type guns uh but then you know you think about like brave firefighters was a sega game right but it used the opto sensor up in there so you could use an lcd on it exactly it just depends let's like go jungle is another one that has like the the uh the actual like mounted guns right, right. and so anything that has mounted guns should work fine with lcd for more than part. likely yeah so there you go john so hopefully it answers your question so it just depends on what kind of guns you have in your arcade cabinet if they're optical guns then obviously you will need a crt in there for it to work but if they are potentiometer based then you'll be fine going with an lcd so it just really depends uh on the game you have if you let let us know which game you have. We can suggest whether or not it would work as well. So right. hopefully answers your question, and good luck with your future repairs. 
Okay, Tim, let's move on through here. And the next one we have is from Robbie. And Robbie says, how do I wire up a Pac-Man control panel so that the player one start button is also the fire button? I have a 60 in one and it works fine except for the button wiring. Thank you. Now, Tim, uh, we have a lot of people ask this question because we did the video on uh, installing a multi-kid kit in a Pac-Man cabinet. Right. And so, unfortunately, the little adapter is really not available anymore. And so some people are wiring these cabinet. They're wiring a JAMA harness in their Pac-Man cabinet basically to get around having to have the adapter. The little Pac-Man to JAMA adapter. And so... Uh, what they want to know is, though, is how can they get their player one start button basically to act like a player one fire button as well. Right. So, so what you're going to do is basically find your fire wire, right. which would your player one, your player one button one, button one, is, right. yeah, would find that wire and also and just kind of jumper it in with your start button, right, so that it actually starts. But after that, your game is not going to notice that start button. Exactly. And so then it becomes your fire button. So what you'll do is you'll twist basically the player one start and the player one button one wires together. Right. And then put them on the um, on the prong that's closest to the ground prong, correct? Yes. Now you won't have to run a separate ground because you've already got a ground there. Exactly. But you will need to run them two wires together. So the player one start and the player one button one or the fire button, you're going to need to twist those wires together and put them on the normally open right. of the switch would be the one closest to the ground. There you go. And Tim, we kind of just Where said, currently number one start is right now, Right. you're just going to add a wire to it, twist them together, and then put a new terminal in there. Right. That's the easiest and so, way. And so we basically said the same thing here, except here we actually use the pin numbers. So, you know, player one start is usually pin 17 on your JAMA harness. Player one button one is usually pin 22. So you're going to twist them together and connect them to the normally open prong on your player one start button. And the same goes for the player two wire. If you want the um, player two start button to be the player one button two. Correct. uh, You'll want to twist those two together and then connect them to the player two start button. And so that way you can play two button games. Because some of them are, some of the 61 games are two button games. Correct. Depending on what you're playing. Now... We have only tried this, though, with the 61 in free play mode. I'm not sure if it works well if you've got your 61 in coin play mode. Right. Okay, and so I, it I really depends on I think as long as you only had one credit at a time, it probably would. The problem would run is if you hit, like, 10 coins in there, and then you had 10 credits, you kept hitting the start. Right. But normally, once a game is started, it's not going to affect it until the end. Right, it's not going to necessarily insert I those additional credits. I think it credits. would still work. Right, it, it won't necessarily insert those additional credits because it doesn't need them at that point. Right. right. And so, yeah, that would be the only question. We haven't tested that, so I'm not sure if it works, but it definitely works when you put the game in free play mode. And, Tim, uh, nowadays, when we do 60 and ones, pretty much everyone is in free play mode. Correct. So, I mean, I, just because, I mean, they're mostly for home users. And so, yeah, so if you just took up the player one start wire with the player one button one wire, twist those together, and hook it to the normally open prong on your switch for button for your player one start, do the same thing with the player two start wire and the player one button two wire, twist those together, put them on the player two start button, that should give you buttons one and two and the player one start and player two start button kind of all together. Right. So that's what it comes down to. So, uh, And I'll throw that back up here because it can be a little confusing, right, Tim? Yeah. I mean, just a little bit, the fact that you it's have to It's really simple, though. It, right. it, it kind of sounds complicated, but it's really simple. Exactly. So it really just comes down, like I said, to combining uh, the player one start button wire and the player one button one wire and the player two start button and the player one button two wire. That's what it's all about. Combining those and then hooking them up to each individual switch to where they go and you'll be in good shape. So, Robbie... Hopefully it answers your question, and good luck getting that Pac-Man cabinet wired up with the 60-in-1 and the buttons being the uh, fire and start buttons for you. Okay, now we do want to remind you guys that we have a contest going on, right? Yes. So we're going to reiterate what the entry is. Let's see if we've gotten any contest entries yet. Let's see here. Okay, we've only got like two. Okay. Maybe one. I can't tell. Okay, so again, guys, we're going to throw it back up here so you guys can see it. Okay. So, we're giving away a Retron 1 HD console with Super Game 501 game cartridge. Stand in the contest. Please send an email to contest at arcaderepairchips.com with your name, your address, and the answer to the question, in what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? So, and we'll tell you at the end of the show, but you do have to get that right in order to win, right? Wasn't this year. Wasn't this year. That's right. Second okay, hint. okay, there you go. You're giving them a hint, at least. It wasn't that. So it's pretty simple, guys. But again, email is contest at arcaderepairchips.com. Name, 
shipping address, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? Send that in, and we will be choosing a winner at the end of the show, and we will ship this lovely console, what I call the Poor Man's NES Classic, to somebody uh, tonight. So as soon as uh, we determine a winner, Tim, we will be shipping it out. So, All right. Uh, so we'll be mentioning this again throughout the show so you guys can get in there, but we do want to give a, you know, we want to get a lot of entries here, you know, we want to give a lot of people an opportunity to win. So, uh, make sure to send those emails in guys and we will be drawing. I'll let Tim randomly pick one at the end of the show. Okay. So, and, and like I said, as long as you get the answer right and we get the address in there, then you'll win. So there you go. Okay, and remember, you can also ask us questions or send us, send us comments in the live chat. So if you guys are in the live chat tonight, please go ahead and leave us some messages uh, and we will, you know, address any questions you may have and talk about any suggestions or anything, any other things that you may want to talk about throughout the show. So please let us know in the live chat. But Tim, I think we're about ready to move on here. Okay. So the next question we have is from Matt. And Matt yeah. says, no, different Matt. Uh, not okay, not, not the live studio okay. Matt here. <laughs> Matt says, hi, I am restoring an old Street Fighter II cabinet and I've got a bunch of other boards off eBay to play in it. It uses a 25-inch monitor, and while the monitor seems fine with Street Fighter 2, it gets wavy when I put other boards in. From what I saw on your YouTube channel, the most likely culprit is the monitor chassis, so I'm going to get a cap kit for it. In the meantime, there was a guy locally who was selling some 20-inch 4x3 CRTs. Since 25s are so hard to find, I thought I would pick this up as a nice backup in case I couldn't get my in case I couldn't fix my 25. So I get the 20-inch all hooked up and the one thing that is eluding me is that the screen's brightness isn't uniform. It's a bit brighter on the bottom than the top. What can I do to resolve that? Thanks in advance. So Matt here says he's um, had a couple of monitor issues. He's got a 25 inch that gets a little wavy when he uses it with different boards. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's not really the problem he wrote in about. The problem he wrote in about was the fact that he bought a 20 inch monitor and it and the brightness is not uniform across the screen. So right. some areas are brighter than other areas. And so, I mean, we can talk about the waviness in the 25 and stuff like that, but Tim, when we have brightness issues like this, what's usually the culprit? What is the cause of having like inconsistencies in our brightness? Usually, uh, you'll get certain areas that are darker, and eventually they'll go to the jail bar is a bad cap is usually the cap uh it's going bad right yeah and that's so, what's usually a cap kit will fix this right type, exactly type. so i mean anytime you have uh, brightness issues ununiform uneven brightness i guess is what we say tim uneven brightness is that a way good way to say it and if you're having like dimness in your monitor overall dimness a lot of times it is because you're having some electrolytic capacitor failure right yes and so that's definitely what I think we have here with this 19 inch is that we're getting some, like I said, we're getting some indicators, Tim, of bad electrolytic capacitors. Probably time to install a cap kit on this monitor chassis as well. Now, Tim, he mentioned installing one on his 25 inch. Probably a good idea to do it on his 25 inch and on his other. Now, the funny thing about the 25 inch, and we're, we can talk about this for just a second here, Tim, is that the 25 inch, he says, is only wavy when it's when it, he's using different boards other than the Street Fighter board. Right. And so it's almost like maybe those boards have issues, but those those other boards could be also needing to be adjusted in order to work. He may need to adjust the hold or the sink exactly. or some other adjustments on there to get those boards working with that monitor. It's just that the monitor is dialed in for the Street Fighter 2 board, right? Right. And so the main thing, Matt, on the 25 is you just may need to dial in your holds, your sinks in order to get to work with different boards. But on the 20, Tim, I'm pretty sure he probably needs to install the cap kit. Yeah. And the last thing that, that we mentioned is about to make sure that it's it's clean. Right. Okay. And that sounds silly, but I remember one time I went to a putt-putt and I was working on a Donkey Kong. And uh, I went, no, it was a Mario Brothers. I took the glass off. It was so dirty. All I did was clean the screen, literally wiping dust off of it. And I came back and the lady went, wow, how did you make that look so bright and, and clean? I was like, I got the dirt off of it. <laughs> so you can have even one side of your monitor can be dirty. I've seen it. And not the other. Uh, that will definitely cause some brightness issues. Or if there's uh, smoke plexi in there when uh, it doesn't need to be, so forth like that. Uh, sometimes it helps. Sometimes it hurts. Right. And Tim, we should also, also mention that if the cap kit doesn't necessarily solve the issue, you could have issues with your tube. Yes. And so at that point, you may want to do a tube rejuvenation, or you may want to try to find a replacement tube. Right. Because sometimes, Tim, tubes just wear out, and yeah. the guns just wear out. I was working on a game last night, a Golden Tee, and I, it was like, 
we sent I, I rebuilt the monitor and it looked good, but it really wasn't quite as bright as I thought it should be. And he said, I, he was expecting this brand new looking screen. I'm like, really? That's a lot of that's your tube now. Right. It's only as good as it can get. And then you, I mean, a new tube will just makes a world of difference. It really does. And so and, in Matt's case here, he may have to either get a replacement tube or try a tube rejuvenation. Right. Okay? And that's another way to do it as well. So a tube rejuvenation could also fix it as well. But uh, Matt, what we want you to do is try to start off with the cap kit first. And if the cap kit doesn't work, then we move on to things like replacing tubes, tube rejuvenation. But also make sure that the screen is clean because we have seen it before where dirty screens have caused what we thought were brightness issues. Right. right Tim? And that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't so. get as bright when it's going through dirt. Exactly. You're exactly right. It loses right, so. a lot of its brightness. Right. So, so hopefully it answers your question there, Matt. I mean, like we said, try the cap kit first and then go from there. May need a tube rejuvenation, may need a replacement tube, but it really just depends on what the issue is that's causing the uneven brightness is. If, if it is a tube issue or a chassis issue. So hopefully it answers your question and good luck uh, getting that 20 inch and the 25 inch monitor that you have up and running 100%. Okay, Tim, let's move on to Mark. And Mark says, Hello, everyone. I am a Sega Megatech owner, but my technical knowledge of the system is poor. I don't seem to have any power going to my main monitor or the two bulbs behind the design plate. Can anyone help me out, please? So, Tim, I put down here a note. This is a note that I put down here. Is the Sega Megatech system was based on the Sega Mega Drive home console, and it was designed kind of like Nintendo's PlayChoice 10. Okay. Except it used Mega Drive cartridges. I definitely have seen one before, but I've never worked on one. Right, and so it's a little bit different. It's kind of rare. There's a lot of people who uh, are looking for them, trying to collect them, just like people are pretty big fans of, like, PlayChoice 10, right? Right. And so, uh, Tim, anytime, though, that we've kind of got this no power going to our main monitor, uh, the two bulbs behind the design plate don't come on, what do you think's going on here that would cause all? Well, that? generally, you if you just get those lights and you got a power supply problem, sure. but if you're not getting those at all, you got an AC problem. Right, exactly. And it could be something real simple, like the kill switch, or it could be a bad power switch, or a bad power cord. Uh, basically, you're going to troubleshoot all the AC from the wall outlet all the way through your game. Right. So you're just going to kind of follow where that wire goes. It goes into, I've even seen a bad AC filter before. Right. Uh, so more than likely, uh, something's disconnected or something, because it's very rare that you turn on a game you don't get any light at all. Exactly. You get nothing. Nothing is usually harder than fixed than a little bit. Right. When If I go to a game and, and I'm bidding on one, if it doesn't come on at all, I have more hope for one that halfway plays. Exactly. Because usually it's a lot simpler. So just follow that AC cord. And, you and, know, uh, um, going back to that, you know, uh, we picked up a Rampage one time at an auction. Didn't come on. And it turned out just to be a fuse. It actually was a fuse. Right. Which means at some point it probably got plugged in and, like, you know, got a little power surge or something like that. But we put the new fuse in and it worked fine. Right? right, and so like you said, sometimes troubleshooting games that don't come on at all are the easiest games to troubleshoot. I can't tell you how many times I've went to a person's house to work on a game. They told me one day it quit working, or started working, then it quit working, and I look and the back door is gone, and the interlock switch is not is not pushed in or pulled. Right, and uh, then I'll just hit it in, and it'll come on. They're like, "Hey, it's working," you know. I'm like, "Well, this switch, the kill switch, and coin doors, and and some games will have them." So. That's definitely something to check out. Absolutely. Or so, just an on-off button, on-off right, switch. Exactly. So let's go ahead and talk about what we have here on the slide, Tim. It says, uh, from Mark's description, it sounds like you are not getting any AC power from the wall into your arcade cabinet. We recommend starting at the wall plug and tracing where the AC voltage goes into the cabinet. Check to make sure all the fuses are good. And Tim, you mentioned that the power switch, we need to make sure that's on. And that all interlock and momentary switches that are in line with the AC voltage are activated properly. And Tim, for those people who haven't seen an interlock switch, uh, can you kind of, I, I wish I would have put a picture on one, but um, I mean, it's just basically like a little white switch that a lot of times is held in by like the back door or right. the coin door or right. something like that. And most of us know what they are. If you Google it, you'll start, you'll look, oh, I know what that is. That's that switch that just pushes in as the door or something else hits it. Exactly. And so, like, uh, a lot of people also don't know, Tim, you can pull those out a lot of times. Yes. So it, I see them taped up all the time, right. and all you have to do is really pull it out. You can even flip it down 
and pull it out and leave it like that. Exactly. So pulling it out sometimes is just as effective as pushing it in. Yeah. And when you're working on a game, Tim, it's better to pull it out so that way you don't have to keep holding down the interlock switch in order for the game to boot up. Right. right. When I first started repairing games, I would try to tape them up. Man, right. I realized some when I remember the time that somebody showed me that and pulled it out. I was just, I felt so stupid. I was just like. What? Okay, I didn't know you could do that. On most of them, we, I have seen a few at Chuck E. Cheese that we have on games that won't let you pull them out. It makes you uh, hold them in for safety reasons. But right, that's so, what it was for, so that if somebody were to break in your game or get in there, they didn't know what they're doing, it kills the power. Exactly, so they don't get shocked right. or, or have other issues. Exactly correct. And so, yeah, I mean, that's really what it comes down to, Tim, is that anything on that AC line could be bad, right? Yes. The AC filter, the fuses, the... The power switch, the power cord, I mean, there could be anything on that line. So what you want to do is you want to trace everything coming from the wall all the way to the monitor and make sure that there's AC voltage going all the way through it. Yeah, I've had a game where I've worked on for two hours and realized that the bad the wall socket had went bad. Yeah, you or know? you blew a breaker, blew, right? Yeah, blew exactly. a breaker or something. So, you know, sometimes uh, start always start at power. Yeah, and I'm going to throw this up here because, Tim, I want people to see the Megatech system That's here. That's kind of cool. I haven't, I've seen one. But uh, you you ever seen one of those before, Never Matt? Is. You know that isn't that cool? The Mega Touch, I mean Mega Tech uh, system is basically their version of Play Choice Ten. Exactly. I now, remember that now, but I and, and interestingly, it has one. a smaller monitor at the top and a bigger monitor at the bottom. Whereas yeah, Play so Choices usually have two nineteens, right? Two of the same monitor in both sides. And so uh, yeah, and it didn't last very long. I mean, it was just for a limited time. Obviously the the mega the mega tech system the the um uh, what do you call the little thing the uh, master system wasn't a big seller here right okay so i mean it was just one of those things where you know it just didn't last that long but uh, you know i mean it's cool to that somebody has them and that they're still out there do you, i mean I, like i said they seem pretty rare i don't even think i've seen one in real life which is pretty uncommon i've for seen me. one seen that one. i remember and because i remember when you were saying that it's like a play choice 10 um, so, Mark, I would definitely say get that thing run and send us some pictures because I'm sure everybody would really like to see what that thing looks like. I'd like to know what games it has in it. Sounds good. So, Mark, hopefully answers your question. Good luck getting that Megatech back up and running. And if you have any additional questions, please let us know. Okay, here, Tim. Let's move on. What do we got next? We have John. And let's move to his question real quick. And John says, On a JAMA harness, I have a question about leads number 27 and 28. The pinouts say they are for ground. What do I actually connect them to? It's easy to see the connectors that go to the buttons and the joystick directions, but where do I stick leads 27 and 28? Thanks. P.S. Your Facebook page is brilliant. And Tim, I think we'll pass that information along to Mark and Louie for all the work that they do. Uh, obviously, they have good things to say about the uh, Facebook page, so we want to thank them for that. But Tim, a lot of people want to know, the, the two grounds that are at the end of the JAMA harness, what are those two grounds for? Because, I mean, we have grounds at the top, too. Right. Okay, and then we have grounds at the bottom. So the grounds at the bottom, what are those really for? Well, the probably better term to use is common wires. Okay. And those wires generally go up to the front of your cabinet, like your coin doors, your buttons, your joysticks. And that's why they're grouped the with the joysticks and the buttons, right? Yes, and that's why most of the time they would go up to the front. Now, you can daisy chain off of them. Right. And hook every, but that that's how you get the ground wires or the common wires up to the front of your game. Now, a lot, a lot of times though, when you buy like the pre-wired JAMA harnesses, they already have like all the grounds at the top somewhere. Yeah. A lot of times. But if you're actually building the harness yourself and the wiring yourself, yeah, what you want is the inputs go on pins one through six. So that'd be the input from your power supply. And then basically everything else is, becomes an output, right? Right. And so that, those grounds end up becoming, like Tim said, a common or an output ground that you'd usually send out to your, your control panel, your coin doors, your anything else that needs a quote-unquote ground wire. Here's what I usually do, to be honest. Um, I, I was working on a game last night that we had worked on years ago. And uh, it was Steve's multi -K. You might remember it was like it had the trackball. It was a play it multi-game. Yeah, yeah. And what we did was we cut, I think, pin 28, left pin 27 there. That wire, all I did was go around and connect all the grounds to the three buttons, the joystick, and the start buttons. And then I wired that back into pin 27. 27 right so i just cut the last wire and used it to daisy chain everybody and then 
ran it back in and that worked just fine. Exactly. And that and so basically all you're going to use those for are grounds going to your control panel, coin door, anything else you need a control ground for, I would say. Like anything that's going to either a, a coin switch right. or any kind of switch. That's a lot of times what we use the grounds for at the end of the chassis. And Tim, let's go ahead and put up the slide here so people can see that. While pins 27 and 28 are referred to as ground on most JAMA pinout diagrams, the more correct term would probably be common, like you mentioned, Tim. We use this as the ground for the joysticks, buttons, and the coin door. So, uh, Tim, and this is according to the real Bob Roberts, who we go by quite a bit, mm -hmm. he likes to send pins 27 and 28 to the player one controls, and then pin E, which is the opposite side of pin 27 for the coin door, and pin F for the player two controls. And, that, and Tim, that would really only be if you had separate player controls, like a yes. cocktail cabinet or something like yeah. that. But that's the way that Bob Roberts tells us to wire it, so that's the way we've always done it, right, yep. Tim? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And so we've always used those grounds there at the bottom of the chassis for going to switches on the control panel or the coin switches. Now, if you've got a Pandora's box board or you've the got one of these uh, game elf boards or something like that, a lot of them use pin 27 as the sixth button for each player. So you don't have to have the extra kick harness. Exactly. And so that and so you want to be sure that if yours is using pin 27 as a actual button instead of a ground that you wire it accordingly, okay? Right. Cuz if you put a ground in there, it's going to think that that button is constantly being held down. Yes. Basically. So you got to be really careful with that. So, but uh, for the most part, we treat it, Tim, like we said, as if it's a common, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what it comes down to. So, yeah, so basically the end grounds we use for output to our joysticks and our coin door, the, the upper grounds, pins one through six, we use as input from our power supply. Yes. Now, you can jack into those grounds at the top and distribute them from there if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. But this just seems to make the wiring cleaner, right, Tim? Yes. And that's really what it comes down to. So, uh, hopefully, John, that answers your question. I mean, it, it's a common question, Tim, because a lot of people just see ground and they all look the same, right? right? And so, let's think about the pins one through six, the grounds that are up there. Let's think of those more as, like, traditional grounds. And let's think of the bottom of the harness more like a common ground that we use to ground all of our controls and switches. I think that's a great way to look at it. So, John, hopefully that answers your question. And good luck wiring any JAMA cabinets you may have to wire in the future. Now, Tim, we got a question from Fox McLeod. He says, what happened to Barb Robert? He's been closed for over a year. We're not really sure. We're thankful that the website is still up because yeah. it has great information on it. But, you know, Tim, I mean, he's getting a little bit older, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting to a point where it's just a lot of work to ship out all the parts. Maybe right? so. And so, uh, yeah, health issues, somebody said. Wouldn't be surprised about that yeah, either. Hopefully, hopefully Bob gets to feeling better very soon and decides to open back up the store. But if not, Tim, his website still has a great... A lot of great information on it for especially oh, yeah. those who are getting into arcade repair. <clears throat> so, hopefully answers John's question, Tim, and we'll continue on with the show. Okay, it looks like our next question is from Scott. And Scott says, I am setting up a 60-in-1 and I have no sound to the speaker. I have checked and I have checked the output from the mini jack and it is fine, but the speaker leads, the two white ones from the standard Japanese JAMA harness are 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 giving me no sound. I've tried two different speakers and they are both functional. One thing to note, I am powering the 61 board with the Molex power input instead of an arcade quote unquote power supply or a computer power supply. Would that be an issue? Thanks, Scott. So, Tim, uh, we have Scott here, and he's having an issue with his 60-in-1 board. He's right. saying he's not getting sound from the two speaker wires that are coming off the harness. Now, when he hooks up uh, headphones to the headphone jack, he gets sound fine, okay? So, obviously, the sound is okay. The problem is that he's not getting it through the speaker. So, right. what could be causing the board not to output sound through the speaker, but output it through the headphone jack? Well, it, the only thing that I can think of, he could have a bad board right and 61 boards we've talked about this before tim are notoriously like quickly built yeah so because of that sometimes the quality suffers right maybe so. and so yes maybe. he could have a bad 61 board right yeah but because what concerns me is that he can because what i would tell him to do is to plug in the headphone pair of headphones that right. tells me if the board is given sound exactly i'm a little bit worried about some of the wiring or just the voltage so if it it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter that he's using the um, ATX style or the Molex connector, as long as the voltage is right and hooked up correctly. Right. You're running 12 volts, um, then you should be able to hear some sound. Now that 12 volts is very 
important on the 61 board stem because the 12 volt line is what the audio amplifier chip runs off of right okay so, if so you're you, only running five volts so you've got the wrong wire going over there right then it's not gonna or if power. your 12 volt voltage is low yes and so that's basically what we talk about in the slide here tim and i'll put it up here powering the 61 board through the molex connector should not be an issue but with that said you need to make sure that your board is getting enough voltage on the 12 volt dc line as the audio chip the audio amplifier chip runs off of this voltage. If the 12 volt DC voltage is low, the headphone jack will work, but the amp will not have enough power to output audio to the speaker. And that's and that could be happening here, Tim. And you know, a lot of computer power supplies tend to have lower 12 volt uh, DC lines for some reason. A lot uh -huh. of times they're not quite 12. They'll be about 11 and a half, 11.6 or something like that. We need a full 12 volts. But they're adjustable, most of them. Well, the computer one's not so much. Okay, because okay. they say he was using like a computer style. Now, I if it see. is adjustable, yes, try to adjust it and see if you can get that full 12 volt DC. But if you can't, you may have to run a power supply that will give you that full 12 volt gotcha. DC. And it could be that the power supply you have hooked up doesn't have enough amperage to put out a consistent 12 volts to the audio chip probably so and so what you may want to do is that now tim he also needs to make sure that his volume is turned up in the test menu too yes okay and because there is a volume control in the test menu and so you need to make sure that you have that turned up all the way as well now and tim like you mentioned could just have a bad 60 and one board too it could be that the audio amp chip on the board is just dead right okay so that means no amount of voltage will help you and you probably will need to get a new 60 and one board but before assuming that let's make sure we're getting a full 12 volts to that audio amplifier chip so uh anything else you want to add here for scott tim no i think it's pretty simple to wire them up so it's probably not as wiring you just run the one white lead to one side and one white lead to the other side, right? Right, and you see we have uh, we have some people in the uh, in the chat here saying ATX power supplies usually have lower voltage and most don't have other volts like negative five, and that is true. Now the sixty one does not require negative five. Negative five is not required on multi game right. boards, but the twelve volt line is. And like like uh, he mentioned in the chat, ATX power supplies a lot of times will have lower voltage on that twelve volt line. It won't yes. be quite twelve, and so we need to make sure we're getting a full twelve on that 12 volt if you line. can't adjust it then maybe you should try a different type power supply exactly so scott hopefully answers your question let's try adjusting that voltage up just a tad checking our 12 volt line making sure that it has enough voltage getting to it and if we can't get the 12 volt line there let's try a different power supply and see if that helps us out so hopefully answers your question and good luck getting that 61 board sound working 100 percent and Tim, we have a uh, comment from somebody in here, Leather Wing. He says, I bought my first cabinet, a uh, 81 Galaga cabinet. Thank you for your videos. I'm hoping to fix this up and restore it. Awesome. So Leather Wing, we, uh, we are glad to hear that. Hopefully our videos can help you get that game restored and keep us up to date on any progress you may be making with that cabinet. My so. first game was a pole position. What was yours, John? My first game, I think, was the Soul Calibur you bought me. Yeah. I yeah, so. so I mean, and I have the board what still. That was your very first game. Play Choice 10 I got from you. Play Choice yeah, 10. Yeah, Play Choice 10 <laughs> that you got from you. So there you go. So uh, uh, lots of great memories. And if you guys have whatever your first game was, let us know in the chat. We want to hear. If you guys have games, let us know what your first game was that you got, and we'll go from there. Now, Tim, I think it's time to remind everybody about the contest real quick. Right. And, Tim, it looks like we have less than five entries right now. Okay. Less than five. Your so right now really your good. odds of winning are very good. But you have to enter, right? And so, to enter our contest for the Poor Man's NES Classic Edition tonight, which includes a Retron 1 HD console and a Super Game 501 game cartridge, you need to send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com with your name, your address, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? And Tim, somebody said 2017. Oh. So, no. it wasn't that one either, no. right? Nope. It wasn't last year. It wasn't, no, wasn't this, this year. year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get two clues. Wasn't last year. Right, wasn't, wasn't this, this year. year. So there you go. So, uh, but to enter the contest again, guys, contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Send us an email there with your name, your address to ship, because we're going to ship this to you. So whatever address we can ship it to you at. And the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? So get that information to us, guys. And at the end of the show, we will draw a name and they will get this prize package. Tim, isn't that an awesome prize package? Yes. Here, I actually have one over here. I'm going to grab it real quick. I have a uh, Retron 1 HD. And, Tim, right. I'm going to let you be Vanna White here. Oh. So, um, you want to show everybody what a Retron 1 HD looks like? There we go. Up oh, this way. Mm -hmm. There you go. Higher. 
There we go, right there. Oh, yay, live studio audience. We didn't even hit the applause there. It's very good, Matt. We've got a cartridge you put in here. Right, and it on the back here, it has uh, HDMI. It also has um, your three, your red, your red uh, white, and yellow if you want to hook up to a, a CRT television. And then we also have the um, the 16x9 or 4x3 switch, so you can play in either widescreen or just regular mm -hmm. 4x3. And um, it takes old Nintendo controllers, so if you have any old NES controllers around, you can plug them up to this. There you go. Still get some use. Real one. That's right, and it comes with <laughs> one. It does come with one controller in the package. So right. uh, in the package, I believe... I believe it comes with the HDMI cable, the power supply, the cartridge will be wow. in there as well, and you'll get games one controller. How many on the cartridge? 500. 500, wow. Now, there's a lot of duplicates That's a pretty in there, good price. There you go. So, uh, free is really good price. I'm going to put my name in there. There you go. So, again, guys, if you want to air the contest, contest at ArcadeRepairTips.com. Send us your name, send us your address, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? And we will get it in there. So, uh, what? let's see where we're at. It's got to be correct answer, right? It has to be the correct answer. That's right. What year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? You will find it on our website. We will not tell you where, but it is listed on our website. I think it's listed on our, on our Facebook page, on Twitter as well. Uh, our birthday, whenever we put our birthday in, a lot of times we put that in as the year. Okay. Not always, but um, uh, sometimes we do. And so, uh, But our website definitely has the information there, so make sure you check that out if you want the answer to the question that will win you a Retron 1 HD console and a Super Game 500 in one. Now, Tim, we are about to move on to the uh, tip, the uh, Tim's Tech Tip segment, but we right. have a question in the live chat. Okay. He says, I have a dedicated cab Star Trek SOS that is getting power to the fans and the marquee and coin doors, but no sound picture, so I don't know if the game is booting. Your first troubleshooting thoughts, there's no net glow. Okay. Okay, so we're getting uh, no sound, no picture, no net glow, but we are getting power to the fans, we're getting marquee, and we're, get, we're getting coin doors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, so, and uh, Star Trek SOS, I'm not sure what the SOS is for. I don't know. You probably know better than I would. Which I don't one know that is. One. Okay. I think it's a shooter. Is it a shooter? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah. It is. I think, I I think you're right. Off S1 here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Tim, so this is from Captain Retro. So, Tim, we are getting some power. Right. Obviously, because we got fans, we've got, um, we've got marquee light, we got coin door. So, we're getting AC power, it sounds like, but we're not getting any net glow, we're not getting right. any sound. Generally, so, that's where you want to check your power supply, because right. those are probably AC fans. Right. They're the opposite problem what we were talking about earlier. What we normally see, you turn on, and you got some marquee lights, you got some lighting up front, you got fans going, you're thinking, wow, I should be getting some game here. But you need to check your power supply and make sure that your 12 and your 5 volts are correct. Now, here's the whatever thing, Whatever the voltage is for this game. Right. He's saying he's getting some coin door lights, okay? Well, they could be AC or DC power. That is correct. He could have AC or DC power coin lights. It depends on the lights, right? Yeah. And so, checking the power supply is always one of the first places we start. Make sure you're getting enough voltage out of your power supply, right? Right. Because we may have enough voltage to power the coin door lights, but we may not have enough voltage to run the board. Because if it's your monitor, we should hear the game playing. That's what we Right. talk about playing blind if you try to start it or coin it up does it play then we go to the monitor because he is saying he's any net glow right but if your pc's not or or the main board's not pushing it you may not get some get any activity on your monitor exactly oh yeah and uh matt just uh, brought up what the uh, star trek looks like what's oh, the sweet. sos stand for is it on there i don't even know same old stuff, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Something like that. But yeah, I mean, so what you want to do is check the power supply first. Make sure we're getting correct power to your board, right? Right. Okay. Before you suspect a board issue, make sure that it's running the correct power. Right. Now, if you've got power going to your board and right. everything else, then... Maybe it is your board. Okay, Matt, what do we got? Strategic Operation Simulator. There you go. Strategic Operation Simulator. Yes, there we go. SOS. So there you go. So definitely want to start at the power supply. Now, Tim, <coughs> he could also have a monitor problem as well, right? Yes. But he won't know that unless he knows that he's getting good voltage to his board and that his board's working right. properly. Right. we got to start at power first. Right. So let's start at <coughs> let's start the power supply and let's make sure that we're getting good voltage all the way to our board. I mean, mm -hmm. that's going to be key. And then, Tim, now he could have a bad board. Even could though have. we're getting good voltage to it, okay? And so that could be hard to troubleshoot depending on what kind of system that uses, and I'm not exactly sure. Vector. It, oh, well, it's a vector game, so it probably has like a harness that actually hooks up to it and things. So, uh, it's getting, a pretty rare game. Right. Well, That's cool. We've seen, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, but like, you just don't, I haven't seen none in a long time. That's true. That's a good game to have. Right. So obviously what we want to do is we want to make <coughs> sure, like I said, power supply is working. Now, Tim, is there anything else that he can go to? Let's say his power supply is working. Everything's putting out correct voltage. What would you start suspecting at this point? 
if his power supply is working and uh, he turn, you can turn the brightness up on your monitor and you actually do get something on the screen. Right. Like cranking the brightness all the way up, then it's probably his board. There you go. So hopefully that helps you out, Captain Retro. Like uh, Tim mentioned, if you turn up the brightness on your vector monitor, you should still see some some sort of brightness effect on it. If you're not getting that, could still have a monitor issue as well. But if you turn that brightness up, you get brightness, then it probably is your board if you've already checked the power supply. So hopefully that answers your question. Anything else, Tim, you want to no, mention before we move just on Just keep here? us up to date, though, what he finds out with that. We'll help him more. There you go. So, Captain Retro, hopefully answers your question. And please send us an email with any additional information you may find. If you do check your power supply, everything's good, and we'll try to help you out further. Nothing else. You can update us on the next live show. That works, too. That's Jump a good in. way to do it as well. So, And then, Tim, uh, we have Fox McCloud here. He says, I noticed Miss Pac-Man and Galaga have lights in the coin door. My Galaxian, my first cab, by the way, doesn't. Is there a way to wire them up and make the 25 cent plates on my Galaxian coin door illuminate? Yeah, a real easy way. It depends on what kind of bulbs you want up there. Generally, games use like a 555 or a 161. Right. Which you can you can buy through arcade suppliers pretty cheap, or you can just go to AutoZone, get any kind of light, little mini bulb, and all you have to do is run it straight from your power supply because they stay on all the time. Right. So if it's a 12-volt light, you're going to run a 12-volt wire and a common wire over to it, and that will light it up. If it's 5-volt, you run a 5 or close to 5. Um, most most games use a 6.3-volt bulb, actually. Right, but, but 5, five volts fine, will right. light it up. Right. And so you just run a power wire to one side of it and power up the other side. The what, reason why I like those wedge style, uh, which is a 161 or a 555 bulb, is because they have two prongs that are real easy to solder to. They're real simple. Uh, but you can... Um, you can it, it's easy to wire up a coin light. Yeah. Simple. So, just run it straight from your power supply to there. Or if you want to, if you've got 12 volts going, you can jump her off of it somewhere. But what matters is what kind of light bulb you want to light up. Now, let's say that the harness is completely gone from the coin door. He may need to get the sockets for those bulbs as well and then run the voltage to them, correct? Maybe so. If right. he has no sockets at all, yeah, you're going to need a socket to wire it to. Right. And, I mean, you can get sockets from places like uh, like Mauser and things like that. Yeah. You know, you can get a, a socket and then just wire the voltage. Even, your, even your AutoZone or something may sell a bulb and a socket all that together. you could screw in there or make work. There you go. So even if you don't have the wiring harness up there or the or the sockets, you may be able to just wire your own version of that mm -hmm. from getting parts now, of the zone. It, and it generally doesn't matter which side goes to what, unless it's a LED light. LED lights, which are new, and you can get 5 and 12 volt mini LED lights. Oh, hang on a second. They work really good. Keep talking. Um, they work great, but what you can do with those, oh, yeah, like these guys. Um but they are uh, do have a positive and a negative side. You know this one. Time. This one I could plug in either way, and it either worked. Either way, wow. Well, so, there you go. but this is the replacement for the. Uh, I forget what these are, Tim. What the like a pinball is. light almost. It is. It is actually like a pinball light. But um, you know, uh, there was a uh, the cabinet I did for the church, which used to be Commando. Uh -huh. uh, used these type of sockets, the wedge type sockets, and a five volt. This is a five volt LED wedge socket bolt. I think, and I think these look great behind a coin light. Yeah, they door. look beautiful. They really, yeah. I mean, it really up. brightens so it up. You that cabinet I did all LEDs in. Look for a so. wedge LED light off of eBay or something. You could get those, and you might have to find a wedge socket, but you can find those too. Yeah, and uh, they're not that hard to find. If you need more help, though, we'll help you find one. Sounds good. So hopefully, Fox, that answers your question. But yeah, you can you can wire up the sockets yourself, or if the sockets are already there, you can get you some bulbs and then put them in there and be in good shape. So, Okay, Tim, let's see. Um, Captain Retro had an update here. He says, I picked up, uh, this is the Star Trek, I picked up. I picked it up from a buddy's house. He said it used to work, and it has been home use only for as long as he's been alive, 32 years. I will let you know the progress. Please do. So there you go. But home use only, that's, uh, that's a long time for a really vector cool. game. Love so. to see some pictures of that, too. So Absolutely. Uh, Leatherwing says, for my Galaga, everything works. After cleaning up connectors and repairing the linear power supply, there's been a cap kit done, not recently. What would you do in a restore? Uh, control panel cover, cabinet graphics, etc. And I would say both. Uh, a yeah. new control panel overlay. If we we and we've restored plenty of Galagas, I right. usually put right. new nice, T-Mole. Oh, nice overlay like this guy right here. Yep. 
uh, if you guys can see that in the background, uh, we love to put new tea molding on it. Really makes a lot of difference. I and like it's cheap. and on Galaga's, I think the green really really sets it off, which is one new of the reasons buttons. Why. I would always just because buttons get old and crusty after a while, and that's a cheap thing. A new joystick. Um, that's what I would do. Yeah, I would definitely get art, new artwork and control panel. Always, they always need it. Unless you got a new home home use only and one. side like, art too, and you know uh, Galga has a piece of front art down here on the bottom too that you want to put on. Yeah, and so this one actually has brand new side art on it, brand new bottom art, brand new CPO. It's got all of the artwork uh, has been replaced on it. The coin door is the only thing that hasn't been restored. New on marquee this one. always new helps. marquee as well. That's so, where I would go. We we've done plenty of Galagas, and that's where we start. We start um, paint paint usually paint them right, and then put new stickers on them and stuff. There you go. Okay, let's go ahead and. Um, Simon Belmont says, what was that email again? So let's put up the slide for him. What do you think, Tim? Yeah. Okay, to enter the contest. Contest at ArcadeRepairChips.com. Contest at ArcadeRepairChips.com with your name, your address, shipping address, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? Tim, we still have less than five entries. Okay. So if you enter right now, you have a really good chance of winning. I'm just saying. So it's like a 20% chance exactly, right Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, now here's the thing. We don't have much longer in the show, Tim. We just right. have the, we have your tip, your tech tip coming up. We have some discussion and then we're going to draw. Okay. So, I mean, you guys want to get in here before, before uh, the end of the show here and we'll make sure. And like I said, I'm going to let you pick here. Okay. We'll, we'll see where we go from there. So, okay, Tim. Well, I guess it's time to talk about your tech tip. So okay. what's your tech tip for this month? Well, this is a really simple tip, but it's like one of those things that I notice when, when guys are new or if you're working around carpet like we have at work. Um, man, I can drop a screw and it will go 20 feet, or and especially if it's black and we got dark carpet, it's so hard to find. One thing that I love, and we don't include in the toolbox, but it's probably in the two. Uh, toolbox 2.0 <laughs> would be a these metal tray metal magnetic bowls you get <coughs> and we put a link down here and what i like about this matt do you ever use these they're so good especially any kind of mechanics you see them at uh auto zones and places like harbor freight and stuff like that sears carries one but uh, we highly recommend the one on amazon there What's great about these is literally I can be sitting there and take a screw off and just almost chunk it at it and it'll stick to it. It also keeps all my screws together in one place. Sometimes I'll even organize them around the rim. These were on the top. These were in the middle or wherever I'm working on. That thing right there, we used it in the video where we were doing that. Makes every, just finding, just sometimes, and I'm a stickler about screws. I like all my screws to match, be a certain color or whatever it is. Um, or just you think you're missing a screw and you're like, gosh, I know I had that screw around here somewhere. You know, if you got them all right there, that is really good. So if you don't have one of these, I would highly recommend that you order one. And I, I like the bowl set that you can get from Amazon for only $15. You get the four piece set. Well, and the cool thing about that set, Tim, is that they're color coded. So there's a blue one, a yellow one, a red one, and like a black one, Right. like the bowls themselves. So yes. that way you can put certain parts in certain colors and keep them separated. So I, this is one of those things that it sounds really simple and everybody listening right now may have one, but if you don't, I would highly recommend. And of course, sometimes you get across some screws or aluminum or something that don't stick to or aren't magnetic, but it's still a good place to set your screw. And, and you see, I want to read what, what we put here. It says magnetic bowls are a great way to prevent losing screws and other metal parts when working on arcade games. They can also be handy for picking up screws in case you drop one and can't find it. Yes. So mm -hmm. basically you run the bottom of that bowl across the floor and it'll pick up any screws you may make. Here's the instance all the time. I'm always dropping screws under the coin door. Right. And up under there, I can stick that bowl up under there and run around and it'll catch the screw. So, very, and, very useful. And they're cheap. I mean, you can get four of them for $15 here from Amazon, or you can get them at a hardware store. You can get them pretty much anywhere that they sell parts. And right. so, I mean, it's it really is a great way to get... Uh, to keep your parts all organized and everything like that. Oh, I see all of our um, I see all of our uh, contest entries here, Tim. I'm looking at those. But I mean, magnetic bowls, Tim, and, and we used them in the video, like you mentioned here on uh, on this one was the uh, assembly a cocktail cabinet. Yes, this is the one we used them on, and it really is a great way, like we said, to keep parts organized so you don't lose them. 
That's the key. Keep right. parts organized so that you don't lose them. Or that's you don't have to do. spend all your time looking for them. Exactly. Because that's what we don't want to do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and Tim, it always seems like uh, from time to time we actually do. We have some issues with that, don't we? Yeah. So, I mean, you really need to, like you said, we've lost screws under coin doors and other places like that. And so, uh, you really want to be careful. This really does give you a, uh, a chance to, um, to uh, like I said, prevent from losing some screws, which is really great. Now, Tim, I'm looking at the contest entries. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. We're okay. at five even. All right. So now you have a 20% chance. Yeah. So that was our fifth one. I think Simon just sent that in. So uh, we have five contest entries, and uh, we'll give it to you here again in just a bit before we get on. In fact, Tim, let's just go ahead and do it because we're getting close to the end of the show here. Okay, guys, to enter the contest for a poor man's NES Classic Edition, we need uh, your, we need you to write us an email at contest at arcaderepairtips.com with your name. Your address and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? What year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? So, guys, send us your entries. We have, like I said so far, we have five entries. So, uh, if you get here in here pretty quick, you could uh, have a really good shot at winning this. So, yes. uh, we're going to give it away tonight. We really only have, like, maybe about 30 more minutes, if that. Okay. So, you guys get your entries in, and uh, we'll draw here in just a bit. We are at five even. Yes, we are at five even. So, there we go. Okay, Tim. So let's go on to some of our discussion. And Tim, uh, there was a really interesting article that came across our feed and we put up on our Facebook page and a lot of people found it very fascinating. And it was the happy accidents that led to the arcade classic centipede. It was a great article. And you guys should read the whole article, but we are going to talk about the two questions that they cover in the article. And the first one was how the game got its trackball. Right. Okay, and it started out as a button-based game, something like what you would play, like Asteroids, Tim, where you have just the buttons that do the controls. Right. Uh, but that required too much effort. And then they moved to a joystick and button layout, but it wasn't smooth enough. But somebody suggested a trackball, and it was a perfect fit. Now, anybody who has played Centipede with a joystick on the 1601 knows that you can't play Centipede with a joystick. Right. Okay. It doesn't work very good. Exactly, it just doesn't work very well. And so the nice thing, the nice thing about the trackball is, like like the uh, lady in the article says, is that it moves very smoothly. It's easy to uh, move left to right, and you can get, you know, you, basically, it, it, you can tell if the game was designed for it, right? Yes, I almost can't imagine playing Centipede without one. Exactly. And then how Centipede got its unique color palette. A technician borrowed the development cabinet for some adjustments. One of the adjustments he made changed the primary colors to pastels which was met with instant approval. So once uh, once the main developer lady saw the pastel colors, she she got excited. She's like, oh, this is a totally different look. It gives it a really nice, crisp feel. And so then they decided that they were going to change over the... Uh, they were going to change over to the pastel colors in some of the levels. And so a really great article, though. If you haven't read the whole article, we recommend you go ahead and reading it. It's on Forbes, and we'll put a link in the show notes later on so you guys can can uh, click on it and go there. But a uh, really great stuff. Captain Retro says, can't play Arkanoid with a joystick or D-pad either. That's no. right. You need a spinner for Arkanoid for sure. So, But like we said, Centipede was definitely made for a trackball, and it, it's definitely the best option for it's it. It's a really great article. If you haven't read it yet, go back and read that. Now, I think it's, uh, it was just a good read. Absolutely, and it, it really fascinating. Some great information in there. I'm checking our entries again, Tim. I just okay. can't help it. So, uh, But Centipede is Centipede's a great game, Tim. And you used, you used to have one. You still have oh, one? Oh, yeah. Right? Still have one. Still have one. So, And yours had a very interesting CPO on it, right? Yes. So you want to tell a everybody Willis, about that? Yeah, you Willis have a Willis really, CPO. I have a Willis CPO. And, and, and it actually, to me, almost looks better than a, the original. It really uh, does look cool on it. I'll so, have to show but, some pictures But sometime. there's several different Willis, and yours is different than a lot of the other Willis control panels. It's panel always been really bright and free right. and so it's very awesome. interesting we'll have to share some pictures with that but uh yeah absolutely some uh, cool stuff in that article if you haven't read it yet checking our entries again one two three we got six okay we're up to six okay here we go so guys get in like we said okay let's continue on here though tim we have another discussion topic that we want to bring up here and this is from venture beat and it's a donkey kong Christmas special. Okay. okay, so Donkey Kong gets his own Christmas special in the form of a fan-made arcade remix. So, Tim, this uh, article is from Venture Beat, and basically, there's a Donkey Kong Christmas remix version of Nintendo's arcade classic that covers the levels in snow, puts Pauline in a red party dress, and gives a wintry spin on, uh, to many of its other elements. And it used 
Excuse me, uses the original Donkey Kong Arcade ROM, and there's also a high score tournament with cash prizes. That's cool. So, yeah, if you guys want to enter this, you can go to Venture Beat and uh, see the remix version, Tim. And it's pretty neat. Yeah. And it's a little bit different. And, and you know, uh, I believe you have to have the original Donkey Kong ROM in order to uh, play it. And so, uh, but the Venture Beat has the link in that article to it, so you guys can check it out. But it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty uh, cool stuff. So, I mean, I don't know if I would mod my cabinet necessarily to put it in there, but it is, it is kind of just a cool, fun version of Donkey Kong that you can play, right? Oh, yeah. So, okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay, uh, let's remind everybody that we have our online store uh, sale still going on. We reminded everybody at the top of the show, but here we go at the bottom. And uh, again, guys, if you don't have our volumes 1, 2, and 3 DVD set, it's only $38 right now. If you go to arcaderepairtips.com slash store slash sale, you guys can pick it up. Uh, it contains three discs, three DVDs, uh, and it includes over 60 minutes of never-before-seen bonus material. So if you guys don't have our volumes 1, 2, and 3... This is a great time, a great chance to pick it up for a great price. Right, Tim? Yes. Again, if you guys want it for that price, ArcadeRepairTips.com slash store slash sale. And Tim, that sale is only going to be going on through the end of the year. Wow. So once 2018 comes, the sale goes away. Back so now. Exactly. So make sure that you guys take advantage of this limited time author for, uh, offer for sure. So, okay, Tim, I'm going to give everybody one last chance to get in on the contest before we announce a winner. What do you okay. think? Okay. Okay, so here we go. Okay, here is the information last time. Okay, I'm not going to put it up again. After this, we're going to draw. So, tonight, during the live show, we are giving away a poor man's NES Classic Edition. The winner gets a Retron 1 HD console with Super Game 501 game cartridge. To enter the contest, okay, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com with your name, your address, shipping address, and the answer to the question, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? So, what year was Arcade Repair Tips founded? We need the answer to that question, and we are about to, here, we're going to give you about five or ten minutes. We'll talk about some other things, but uh, we have some more, uh, we have some more time here to get that in. And so I said, what a horrible night to enter a contest. Uh, no, nah, it's a good night to enter a contest. It's always, right? a, great it's night. always a good night to enter a contest. Uh, Fox also says, thank you guys for the tips on the coin door bulbs. Is there a way I can donate to the channel? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now there is a, okay, right next to the little uh, emoticon icon, Tim, there's a little dollar sign icon in the live chat. You see that? Yes. If you click that dollar sign icon, you can donate to our channel, right? Yes, you can. And you see YouTube Punk just told him that. Click the dollar sign icon. Yes. So if you are in the live chat and you would love to give us some money, which we would greatly appreciate, click the dollar sign icon and that will take you to a place where you can donate some money to us, right, Tim? Yes. And we greatly appreciate that money, and we're so glad that you joined us and so glad that you want to give us money. Thank you. So there you go. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, so we got some time coming. You got some time to kill, Tim? Anything you want to talk about? How are things at Chuck E. Cheese before we uh, draw here for the contest winner? Oh, always busy. We oh, got... here, do you want to show this off again, yeah, too? Yeah, show it. Okay, I'll... here, I'll hold this up while Tim talks. This is what you're winning right here. Yeah, that is, and it's actually really cool. I don't have one, so, there you, you know, I would... Uh... I would definitely like to own one of those one day, so that is a great thing to have. Um, things at work are good. We're busy. You know, it's always got our new games, new games, new problems. Of course. New things. Uh, really, so what? So what's your I'm, most popular game? Now, for those who don't know, Tim works at Chuck E. Cheese, and they just recently got a new game package. Yeah, you need in. to come by. Right? Okay, which has brand new games. So of all the new games, which ones are like your, your best best sellers? Oh, which the, ones are doing the, the most best? popular are the Paw Patrol and the Quick Play games. Okay, so Paw Patrol is a big one. Yeah. The you know, kids Paw Patrol is huge with the kids yes. right now. Um, but as far as me playing, I love the Cruise and Blast are fun to play. If you play Cru Cruise and Blast, is this that the Cruise and the Cruise and series? Yeah. Yes, it is the it is Cruise the and Blast is the 2017 latest. 2017. Right, version. it's the latest version of, of Cruising USA. So Cruising USA, Cruising World, Cruising Exotica, Cruising Blast. It is definitely fun and a lot of fun to play. And now race it, each it other. records all of your high score saves and everything mm -hmm. like that, and you have a code you can put into yes. it, right? So it does the code system. Yep, does the code system. You can add, uh, upgrade your car every time you play. Use that same car and you can add paint colors or better engine and stuff like that or blast it's been a nitro long time blast. since they come out with a new one for that series it, it is it's and i've heard a... i've heard also that um 
that that's going to um, maybe be coming to consoles pretty soon as well. Yeah. So that they're actually going to release a console version of and it. And we so. have uh, Luigi's Mansion, and it's pretty fun. It actually looks cooler than it to me, and it's fun. I, right. I got bored with it after about a week. But, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, kids love it, so it's a good game. Um, those are the ones that I've been enjoying playing the most. Okay, I'm going to do one more check of the email here, so um, this is it. Then I'm going to have Tim give me a number right, here. Between... I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it as fair as possible. Oh, really? Okay, here we go. Hang on a second. My yeah, you got to give me a number between... Uh, one and six people, right? Yes. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six entries. So give me a All number right. between one and six. So we're going to... Uh, random they number generator. No, they can't My see random it. number generator. Mm-hmm. I'm going to generate, and it says number three. Of so course who it was does. the well, hang third? On. Hang on. The third one, they have to get it right, right? Yes, they have to get it right. The third person to send in was... Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so it was Jason, and his answer, though, was 2001. Okay, and that answer is wrong that is wrong that okay. is correct so 2001 we'll go, is wrong so, so we will go we will go with another random number, number five number five okay one two three four five okay okay so here we go kevin okay hey kevin kevin 2008 all right that answer is correct correct so kevin you won the eight. Oh, here i gotta put it up here hey kevin here, i'll put it up here so we can see it here we go and the winner is... Uh, man, we're almost celebrating 10 years, John. I know. We're getting really close. And the winner is... Kevin! Kevin, you are the proud owner now of a uh, Retron 1 HD console with 501 Super Game cartridge. Yay! Yeah. Hey, way to go, hey, Kevin. Live studio audience over there. I need some clapping. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the Kevin! Time. Kevin! Yeah, we actually... So who did we draw there first? Jason. Sorry, Jason. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 2001, though. Uh, not correct. 2008. Was our first year. So. And we might have met in about 2001, but yeah. we didn't start arcade repair tips until right. 2008. Now, uh, now, here's the thing, though. He actually wrote in later. He actually had multiple entries. Okay. But the first entry that we got, I have to take the first entry. Right. And so the first entry that we got was 2001. Sorry, Jason. Yeah, that's all right. So um, We'll get you, Jason, on yeah, the next one. Yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, we'll get you on the next one. Yeah, I have to take your first entry. Right. We can't that's take multiple entries. That's it. the rule. So, yeah, so tonight we've got uh, we got Kevin. Kevin, you will be the winner of the Retron H- 1 HD and the 501 Super Game. So, so- sorry. Sorry and about that, Without uh, giving Jason. his personal information, where is uh, Kevin from? Kevin is from uh, Snellville, Georgia. Georgia. Okay. So, Georgia. There we go. So, you will be getting a uh, Rich One 1 HD in the mail very soon. So. Thank you for listening. It's later there. That's right. Hey, somebody said Go Cowboys. Yes, there we go. Go Cowboys. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, but uh, I think that's it. So, yes. So, yes, you won something. He said, I never win anything. Uh, you won tonight. There you go. So, there it you go. It was a great night for winning. That's right. It's a great, it's a great <laughs> night for winning. I'm going to play the lottery tonight. There you go. So lucky. Okay, well, Tim, let's go ahead and tell everybody about uh, how they can get in contact with us if they don't already know. Okay. Questions at ArcadeRepairTips.com. Questions at ArcadeRepairTips.com. If you guys want to email us, make sure you put live show in the subject to get it mentioned on the show. Again, that's questions at ArcadeRepairTips.com. And, of course, you can reach us on our YouTube page at YouTube.ArcadeRepairTips.com. The comments from the last live show will be covered on the next episode. So, again, YouTube.ArcadeRepairTips.com to watch it. Of course, Tim, they already know that. They're here. Yes. But I like to cover that anyway. YouTube.ArcadeRepairTips.com. And then we have our podcast. And, Tim, it's no longer Eric and Chris that are doing the podcast. Right. It is Eric and Rusty. Eric and Rusty. Okay, and I need to change that Welcome, here. Welcome, Rusty. Yes. So, Rusty, Eric and Rusty now are doing the new question and answer podcast. Make sure you guys check them out on our iTunes page at iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com. And stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com for the Stitcher page. And then we also have um, our social media pages at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com and twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you check out both of those. We want to thank Louie and Mark for all of the work that they put into our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Tim, that's about it for the actual show. We'll move on to the after show. Anything else you want to say before we move out of the arcade repair realm and to the after show? No, we really enjoyed the contest. If you like that, maybe we could do some more, or maybe we'll have more prizes next time. Uh, So give us some feedback on that. Uh, It was fun to do, and congratulations, Kevin. 
Absolutely. So we want to thank everybody who watched tonight. Thank you for everybody who entered the contest as well. Kevin, we're going to be sending you out your prize here very soon. Tim, I think we may try to do this again too. Yeah. If we get good feedback, if you guys enjoy this, we'll try to give away another one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy everybody. holidays. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Okay, right. and I've got my Mario uh, ugly sweater on here. If you that guys see him down cool here, that is a cool sweater. So we got my Mario ugly sweater on, and I thought I was going to uh, enjoy the year. But uh, anyway, guys, we want to thank you guys for joining us, and we will be back with the after show here in just a minute. If you guys want to tune in for that, so again, thanks for joining us tonight. And remember, here at Arcade Repair Tips, Tim, when we fix the game, we, we play, play the, the game. game. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you in the after show. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production. Hey, we're back. There, there's an extra one. Hey, we got our live studio audience. <laughs> Matt, 
So, so Matt, uh, we teased it in the uh, main. Matt was a part of our live studio audience, the only one here, and he's the only one besides me and Tim who get to see how messy this place is. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Matt, we did tease, though, that you had an accident recently. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? So I was on a buddy of mine's dirt bike, and when I'm not playing games in an arcade, I'm usually out doing dangerous things. So I, I had a wreck. I had to have surgery done on my collarbone. Uh, because I wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> now you go see me, girl. But no, so, I, 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 was was doing, I was jumping on a dirt bike though, and I jumped up when I come down. I didn't remember hitting the ground, so yeah. And then I woke golly. up, woke up, and had to have surgery. So. Well, we are yeah. super glad that you're back up and around. So, because I mean, we went to. I saw you. I guess uh, just like maybe a couple of weeks before that, right mm -hmm. at the Hag, we went to the Hag together, mm -hmm. and so uh, it was. It, you know, and then Tim texts me. He's like, you know, Matt Carter's in the hospital. I'm like, Matt's in the hospital. So uh, I'm glad to see that you're up and around, you're healed up, and everything's good. So Matt, for you know, this is this is the first time you're here. Basically, on the after show, we talk about whatever we want to. So uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what. But somebody did ask uh, Tim if you were born and raised in West Monroe. Uh, no, but I lived there for let's see, 1985 to about 1999. So there you go. All about. 10 or 15 years. I went to high school at West Monroe High School uh, when the Robinson boys were there. Everybody knows uh, Duck Dynasty guys. And then I went to uh, Northeast Louisiana University, which is now the University of Louisiana at Monroe, on a track scholarship, and I graduated from there. There you go. So uh, um, just a little history on Tim, right? Yeah. So and go. Matt's got a pretty cool story. He got five free games this week. There you go. Tell us your story. Could have been a part of the main show. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a man I knew in a, from an Athens video game store called Game Crave, and he said he had some arcades and storage. And I talked to him about a year ago about it, and he got with me about two days ago and said he was ready to get rid of them because he wanted to get rid of the storage. So I brought the trailer, and him and his boys loaded up the games, and I just took whatever they had because they were just giving it away. But You can't beat the free. That's they, right. They happened to give me a free... Battle Shark, which is the one with the periscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle Shark and all that. Great and game. Good Tato game. And, uh, what else see, did you get out of the deal? It was a Danny Sullivan's Indie Heat, three, oh, yeah. three player mm -hmm. type, and a couple others that weren't working, and a couple that needed some work. So, and a couple that I'm sure are probably going to get blown up. That's what we do. Because <laughs> when we can't play the game, we blow up the game. There yeah. you go. <clears throat> so, but hey, free cabinets are free cabinets. It doesn't right. matter who you are. So, now, uh, Last we mentioned that we couldn't we didn't have the live show last last week. It was supposed to be last week, but right. we didn't have the live show last week. It's because I had tickets to the for King and Country and uh, and uh, Casting Crowns concert in Shreveport, and, right? Yeah, real close to Shreveport, and so uh, we ended up going there, and it was excellent. Uh, Tim, they give a great concert. I had a wonderful time with my wife. Uh, we left the kids with my parents, and so it was uh, it was good. I'm glad I got to get away. I hate that we didn't couldn't do the live show when you know when we were supposed to, but uh, I think it worked out better on the second week anyway. Except oh, yeah. for this whole cold thing. Hopefully, I'll get over that pretty soon but um now tim did you partake of any shopping on a day after thanksgiving any black friday you know i did not i i'm not a big black friday shopper i'm probably more of a uh cyber weekend shopper like i kind of starts off my cyber weekend i did buy some <laughs> stuff online and got some pretty good deals, but I definitely didn't get the super black friday deals i'm sure that you did john tell well, us about and that's why fine. my entire room here looks like a warehouse it's because okay. i got really good deals i did pick up a, a xbox one s for 170 uh there was ebay had them uh for that and it took them a while to ship but i did finally get it so i have an xbox oh, nice. one s now which is really nice uh there were i mean there were deals all over i got tvs 49 inch televisions for 200 dollars. i mean uh, uh i mean most of the stuff that's in here was because we got black friday deals and yeah. so black friday and, and you know the um the retron consoles were black friday deals as well okay good uh they were 15 bucks on black friday sale oh wow so Let's help kevin that he's think, he thinks he's hey. won a major award you know, we well, mean, still were, a major we award. mean they were full price that's right <laughs> we paid full price prizes that's exactly yeah. correct no, that's a, that's, a, that's a great deal. Though. It was a great deal. And that's a, a great little console, and I'm sure he's going to enjoy it, Tim. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, it, it really is good. Now, Tim, though, there's something big coming up, like tonight and then tomorrow. Right. Uh, do you have tickets for said thing tonight? Yeah, I did not get my tickets because I have to work tomorrow, and I'm not that foolish anymore. And, you know, I, I have to wait a few more days. And that's how I feel, too. I just... But, of course, the big thing we're talking about, guys, is Star Wars The Last Jedi. 
And so it actually comes out midnight showing tonight, and then we have tomorrow and is the premiere and all that good stuff. I'm well, hoping I get to see it sometime. Our soon. good friend Mike Page got to see it last night. Oh a wow! Special okay. showing. Only ten people got to see it. And Mike, I don't know if he's all right now, but he did say he wouldn't give out any spoilers because he's not that kind of guy. No, we don't want spoilers. He anymore. was just like, it was really good. Really good. He and and he's a diehard Star Wars fan, and he he would not say. If he if he didn't like it, he'd tell me. He right. was like, "No, that one was good." He he was really impressed. So, with Matt, it. are you a Star Wars fan? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so you're gonna be going to see this. Like, you got a time frame? As soon or? as I can. As soon as you can, are you gonna mm-hmm. go to the midnight showing after you leave here? Or? Probably not tonight. Not no. tonight. No. Nope. I don't blame you. Waking up in the morning sucks after a midnight showing. I know I've done <laughs> it a couple. Of times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially so, uh, when you got to work the next day. That's right. So I mean, yeah, exactly. Especially when you have to work the next day, it's pretty rough. So now, Tim, have you seen any movies or TV shows lately that you want to talk about? Because you know, we always talk about those kind of things too. I've been, uh, of course, I'm a big Netflix fan, and I get on a, one show and I'll binge watch. I've really been into Glitch lately. If y'all, if y'all know what Glitch is, nope. Glitch is um, is made in Australia and it's really good. Uh, it's about um, all of a sudden this kid is riding his bike and he looks out and these people start coming out of the grave. Six people come back from the dead, um, and so where are they? And they don't really realize, and it takes them a, a while to remember. Some of them have been dead just a few years. Some have been dead two hundred years. In fact, the mayor of the town comes back from the dead, and so. What caused this, and how did they come back? And that's what the show was basically about. And then them regaining their memories and remembering why, how they got killed, and what happened to them. Pet cemetery. And, uh, Pet cemetery. <laughs> yeah. One of the one of the twist is is that the local sheriff is, and it wouldn't be telling anything if you want to watch it. You'll you'll catch this in the first episode. Uh, one of the people coming back is his wife. Well, he has moved on and remarried, and so now he's torn. And but then again, is it really her? Is the kind of deal that you got to find out. So that's one show I've been watching. Also, I've been watching Greenleaf. Now, Greenleaf was a show that I really had kept popping up and kind of recommended for me. I thought that nah, doesn't really sound like me. It is on the Oprah Winfrey channel. Oprah Winfrey oh, is okay. in it. And I'm normally not a big Oprah Winfrey fan, and especially anything to do with spirituality or stuff, I figured we'd be way off on basis. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I really like this show. It's about a mega church in Memphis, Tennessee. And basically, you know, how they run and operate. It's a family-run church. And uh, it just has some really good storylines, and then all of a sudden it really gets... I can tell you, season two is just like, wow, it just blew me away. My wife recently said, oh, oh, I was like, just watch one episode. Tell me if you like it. She watched it. She's like, oh, now she's every night. She's like, I'm almost on season two. She's just, she's really getting into it. So it's one of those shows that you're just going to have to trust me. You'll watch a little bit of it, um, especially if you grew up in church and kind of how church things go on and a lot of, uh, what do you call it, drama in the church and stuff like that. Can you imagine a pastor in a mega church? And then kind of the money getting to them because they definitely live in a huge mansion and have nice things. Wow. And so it uh, it all that plays into that. Okay. It's very good. No movies? I had the, I've not been to any movies lately because um, I've been waiting on Star Wars to come out. So, And I don't know that I'll get to see it for at least a couple days. Yeah, I mean, for me, it'll, it might, might even be next week before I get around to it or more. Uh, but for me, I've been now. I saw two movies. I've seen Cars three and the Lego Ninjago movie because I mean that's what you right. have kids. That's what you watch. You right. Watch kid movies. I will say the Lego Ninjago movie is hilarious. Okay, it is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. Oh, okay. And I mean the jokes that it makes are just really well done. It's kind of insensitive to kids that have father issues. That's okay. the only <laughs> downside to it. But other than that, it's hilarious. So like it actually is like it, it because like. It's about, you know, one of the Ninjago guys, like his father is the bad guy. And so it kind of talks, of, there's kind of some insensitivity there that people may not take, uh, may not take a lot of, uh, what's the word? It may take the wrong way. Right. So, but it, it actually was pretty good. Cars 3 is pretty good. Uh, TV shows, I've watched The Punisher all the way through. It is fantastic. The okay, Punisher on yeah. Netflix. Um, here's the deal. Yes, it's a comic book. But it probably shows the most accurate depiction of what veterans go through after they come back from war than any other TV show I've ever seen. Wow. I mean, and that's what I'm going to say. I mean, that's really what it's about. 
It's about kind of how he deals with the things he saw in war and how other people deal with the things that they saw in war. I mean, it really opens your eyes to kind of what they have to deal with when they come back. Wow. Okay. And so I've it's been, a comic I've, book I've show. I've noticed that, and I've right. been thinking about watching it. It is a so comic I'll, book show in the I'll truest put it on my sense. List. Yeah. But it is more about how these veterans of war deal with all of the stuff that they've seen. Awesome. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, I mean, I. I couldn't stop watching it. I bench watched it all the way through. It is violent like nobody's business, okay? Because it's okay. the Punisher, okay? I'm telling mm-hmm. you that. So if you don't like violence, don't watch it. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it is bloody as all get out, but it was very well done. Have you seen it, Matt? Have you seen it? I've seen it through episode five. Okay. Through, what do you think so far? It's good. It's good, isn't right. it? Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I want more for sure. Yeah, have you seen... Oh, they already signed up season two. It's all already right. guaranteed. Like right. they've already said. That's my goal. It. I'm trying to watch as many shows as I can because I. It's the way you watch now. You binge, but then when you get through, you're kind of disappointed. But if you keep watching enough, then all of a sudden you oh the season two just got released. You can pick back up, you right. know, and pick. As long as it, but if it's way in between time, you lose interest or you forget about it. So you haven't seen the part yet where the bomber part. Mm-mm. Okay, not gonna not gonna spoil anything. The <laughs> okay. same bomber part. The bomber part. So you need to watch that because it's pretty awesome. So the whole thing is incredible. Uh, the bad guys in it are really well done. Like that's one of the things I really liked about it. And I mean, just need to watch it if you haven't already. Uh, Mr. Robot had their season finale last I've seen night, that. and um, it was uh, it was pretty gory, pretty graphic. Uh, but I mean, I, it was awesome. Like the finale was really great. Um, and I'm watching The Gifted. They had their finale, but I haven't watched it yet. And it's pretty good if you like X Men stuff. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, and then in, in the uh, in the chat, uh, YouTube Punk says Dark Mirror. Have you guys watched that? I have watched part of that, and it's is that's the one with the that's in German. I have no idea. I think it's the twi- It's like Twilight Zone. That's what I've heard. Okay, so, maybe, maybe it, or is it the dark? One of them is like in German, and they're English sub. I don't they're, think that that's it's not like, Dark Mirror. It's it's a new one, The Dark or something, and people are really talking about how great it is, but it's hard to watch because it's like they're speaking German but talking English. Right. It's like that old watching old Chinese movies, you know. Oh, fight me, you know. <laughs> so, but I think once you get past that, it's pretty good. No, Dark Mirror, I think is like I said, I've always heard people describe it more like the Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like show it depicts things and culture and things that okay. are kind of strange. I probably weird. like it. <coughs> Uh, you know, there is a kid's movie coming out that I want to see, John. What's that? Ferdinand. Ferdinand. You know, uh, my Ferdinand wife and I have talked about that. I want to go see Ferdinand. So, uh, we, Chuck E. I Cheese think a, a, must be a big sponsor of them. They've been showing these little clips and stuff, and I'm like, I want to go see that movie. You know, John Cena is actually the voice of yes. Ferdinand. So. It looks funny. Very interesting. Now, uh, YouTube Punk said he watched Logan. Have you guys seen Logan? No, Logan yeah. is very good. Yeah. If you haven't seen Logan, uh, I went to the movie theater to see that one, actually. And, uh, man, I, I, I'm, <laughs> you, you went twice. I think I shed a tear. A little bit, man. Like right. at the end, I mean, it was sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but a good movie, though. Great movie, yeah. But Punisher, he says, uh, great but slow. I didn't find Punisher to be slow, like personally. Oh, yeah? So I mean, I thought it went pretty quick. You got to get a little bit of backstory before you go. Yeah, right exactly. Into brutal, or it's like the War Zone movie where it just jumps right to brutal from start. Oh, to finish. I know exactly. So yeah, I'm with you. Need a little backstory, and they fill that backstory in very well. I tell you what, the guy who plays the Punisher, fantastic actor. Oh yeah, like okay. he plays that part like he was born to play it. It's mm-hmm. awesome. So, but like I said, I mean, the nice thing is that, like, if you watched Daredevil Season 2, okay, and that's where, like, the first four episodes have that Punisher mini Mm -hmm. arc, well, at the beginning of Punisher, it kind of leads you to believe, like, it's all over. Like, he killed everybody that was involved with his family's death, and, like, that's it. Mm -hmm. But then it picks back up from there. So, it kind of picks up from where the four, and you don't have to see those four episodes to know... Like where it's going, but it does help a little bit. So. I'm going to add that to my list. Then. Yeah, it, no, it's gory. Warning up oh, yeah. front. So, I mean, if you... Well, it's going to be more than, than Walking Dead. Yeah, not... No, no. Uh, I, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty... You watch Walking Dead? No. But I've okay. seen The Punisher, and it's, it's brutal. It's... Yeah, I mean, okay. I was well, you gotta, say, it's pretty... Well, I'm just saying, um, if any... If you've watched Walking Dead, it had a huge mid-season finale. Gotcha. Where... The, the you know at least enough of the story to know who Carl is. Carl's a little boy right. who's grown up. Well, he's bitten at the end, and so the big thing is, uh, is Carl gonna die? Right. Or oh, now we actually have an arcade question. We're in the after show, but we have an fine. arcade question. Can you put a multi jamma tabletop super cobra? Or can you put a multi jamma into a tabletop super cobra arcade machine? Yes. I'm sure you could. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Easy enough, we answered it, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, what you need to do is either rewire it or find a Super Cobra to JAMA adapter, right? Yeah. If you did You're that, you're going to have to rewire it for sure. But... Right. You may have to rewire it. If you can find an adapter, you don't have to, but I don't just know if really they have depends. One. Right, exactly. I don't know if they have one either. So, Okay, is there anything else we want to talk about? Anything else, Matt? Anything else you want to talk about, Tim? Christmas presents. Christmas presents! I totally forgot! Ah, uh, Matt, <laughs> we got some Christmas presents down there. Okay. Oh, this is mine. That is yours. Oh, thank you. It actually says my name on it. Jonathan. Oh. That one's yours. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so, you want to go first or am I going to go first? I'll let you go first. Okay, you're going to let me go first? Okay. And I'll, I'll explain, because uh, I'm going to have to do some explaining if you don't know what it is and An why oscillating I Oscillating multifunction this. power tool. Okay. Okay. So, um, tell me, I mean, awesome. Okay. What else? All right. Uh, awesome. They're awesome. Yes. The, and there's, there's a specific reason why I got this for you. Okay. I, did you see the, the video that somebody did? They use this tool and it strips off, um, like control panel control overlays? panels. It's basically an electric scraper. Wow. Right? Matt, have you used one? They oh, yeah. use them on flooring and stuff. Well, I Here, saw, let's hold it down. Let's hold I it saw, up for these guys. I saw a guy use this. And you know how we, we scrape go. and scrape and trying to get an old sticker off. He was just going, and he was just ripping off the sticker off a control panel overlay. They're We're gonna also, have to try that out. I want to see this. But I, that's what. And I remember you just spent three hours on one not long Scraping ago. It down, that's right. And he made that look so easy. Now scrape it has a, concrete, cut plastic, cut plastic. Yeah, you can cut, cut. flooring. It, you can cut flooring. with it like. You know, the best like a application Dremel. I found to use that for is you can use it rather than drilling a hole in it and using a sawzall or a jigsaw to do a cut in the middle of a board. Right. You can push that straight into the board wherever you want to. Wow. Right. Yeah. Right blade. Yeah. It goes. We kind of have used something like right. this. Right. Exactly. But this is a little different. And what I really got it for you for was to scrape uh, control panels off with. Well, this will come in handy too when I have to redo my floor when it oh, gets yeah. wet again because I can, you know, kind of peel yeah, up all the stuff too. Just, mm -hmm. That is cool. So this is a oscillating multifunction power tool. Yes. If you know Jonathan, I like to get him tools, and that's especially right. some one that I know he doesn't have or that he could use. Well, I definitely don't have that one. Could so that's the good definitely one right there. use. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now this is a really big box here. Here. Rip um, it. Rip into it. You know, it's more fun that way. Well, it's hard when you do there it you on the screen here. So knowing you, whatever's on the outside of the box, it's not. It's, it's probably more than one thing in here. Yeah, that's more than one thing. Okay, <clears throat> but you did your shopping. That's right. And wrap it at Walmart.com. Oh, oh, there you go. I made it easy for you. Okay, not a lot. Not as much stickers on this one. Okay. And well, you remembered the presents. We would have to do them off, off the air. We got lots of bubble wrap. <laughs> lots of filler. All right. <laughs> okay. First thing we have is awesome. It okay, is a. Up to the screen there. It is a work light. An LED one. LED work light. So there you go. So that's it's kind of like the spotlights that you get, but it's yeah, LED. yeah. So I mean that's. Oh and I, sweet. I, used, I I bought one for myself. I used it recently, and it works very well. All right. Okay, so that's one thing. What is this? This is a small package. And I'm That's betting it is what it is, yeah. <laughs> LED flashlights. Knowing me, I am. I love flashlights. I can always and I always go through them. So I yeah, still, I give you two. They got batteries in them. Sweetness. I'm gonna give. Oh, somebody said. Oh, uh, uh, Eric says Merry Christmas, Tim and Jonathan. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, Eric. Yeah, we're celebrating right now. This is it. <laughs> okay, got two more things in here. Well, this is. Freddy's Pizza. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Pizza it's kit. got a pizza kit. Comes with the apron. What else is in there? I forgot what else. It's got an apron, apron a pizza, pizza cutter, cutter pizza and pan. a pizza pan. Five Nights at Freddy's. It's always good just because you work at Chuck E. Oh, yeah. That's funny. So. Oh, and Last thing. a shirt of some sort. <laughs> Guys, have you ever seen the shirts I'm wearing? 90% of them come from Jonathan. <laughs> He knows I like arcade-related T-shirts, and this is another cool one. There you go. There's Atari on it. That yeah, would be should great. Have, should have had you open at the beginning. Yeah, I could have wore it, it, wore it for the show. But anyway, there goes our presents for the year. There you go. Merry so, Christmas, everybody. So we got the uh, the LED lights, which, like I said, works. Really I really well. am excited to see how that works. 
you know those little spotlights and we've used them on working on games and stuff and this one just has led so i'm going to take that to work and try that out tomorrow mine worked pretty well so i was happy with it you got I some flashlights you always get yes. flashlights because he always is looking for flashlights. i still have the one you gave me last year i think or the oh year there you go there you go i about wore it out <clears throat> it still works that works pretty good <laughs> and then the i'm rough on them yeah, I'm gonna, this is cool. I'm going to show... You can play Chuck E. Cheese at home now. Yep. Well, free fast food. Comes with a, a to-go box and everything. So I'll make some pizzas. And then the Atari shirt. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jonathan. There go. So nice. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas. That is there a Merry Christmas already. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad you remember the presents, like I say, because I was totally going to forget. So, well, Kevin won, right? Yes, Kevin. Kevin. So we want to congratulate Kevin again for winning the contest. If you're watching now, it's too late to enter. Yes. So we already drew. It's too late. So, uh, but, but we do want to thank everybody who joined us tonight and who watched. And we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Hopefully, you get some quality time with you and your family. And thank Matt for coming. Yeah, Matt, in and being thanks with for us. coming. I gave him a little present. He got like a little uh, uh, one-up mushroom with some candy in it. There you go, Yosho. There you go. Boom. <laughs> so uh, you get a little something too. Here, I tell you what, you can have two little somethings. Here's the controller. Go with it. There you go. Uh, so, <laughs> so there we go. Well, guys, I guess we won't see you again until January next be, year. Yeah, we won't see you until next year. So when arcade repair tips will be working on their tenth year. That will be our tenth year, exactly. May of next of next year will wow. be ten years. I'm getting old. Arcade repair tips. So Matt, how old were you ten years ago? Twelve. 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> Golly! So when we started this thing, Matt was twelve. <laughs> makes <laughs> right. me feel old. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting old now. So it, it, if arcade repair tips were a kid, it would be ten years old. Think about that. Mm. So. But anyway, well, we're going to let you guys go. We want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And again, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. We want to wish you, you the best. Festive. And Happy New Year. Because we'll see you, what is it, the first Thursday after the first of the year. Yes. Which is, I can tell you real quick, it's always good to say that. Let's see. The first Thursday is the fourth. We will see you on the 4th. May the 4th uh, be with uh, you. That's right. May the 4th. Well, January 4th. 2018 yeah. will be the next episode. We hope you can join us then. And uh, guys, just have a great, wonderful holiday. And we hope to see you all back here next year for even more Arcade Repair Tips goodness. Bye-bye. Right. Have Merry a good Christmas, night. Merry everybody. Christmas, and we'll see you next year. We out.